Hello, souls and demons, and welcome back to the portal. Today's true story episode is Tales from the Gas Station. Creepy encounters some of you mortals have gotten into while at the gas station. So sit back, grip your seats, lock your doors, and enjoy. Gas station guy in the middle of nowhere offers to let a man help you, baby. I remember something that happened to my best friend and I a few years ago, and I figured I might share it here. While my best friend at the time and I were seniors in high school, 2016-ish, we went on a weekend trip to visit my grandmother a couple hours away from my town in Georgia, USA. The town we lived in was comparatively small for the state, but one of the biggest towns within a few hours. But we had to travel about two and a half hours through tiny, somewhat redneck towns to get to my grandmother's place. We were on our way back home and we had to stop at a gas station literally in the middle of nowhere. I'm talking cornfields, cotton fields, streets with no signs or lights, not even stop signs, and definitely no cell service. The convenience store attached to the gas station had maybe a couple of snacks inside, but looked deserted from the outside. No other cars or people in sight. And we didn't bother to get anything other than gas. I paid with card, mainly because I didn't want to leave my 5 foot 1, 100 pound friend alone in the car while I went alone inside. Another car pulled up on the other side of the single gas pump while I just started pumping gas. And because of everything I read on the subreddit, I already had a weird feeling and decided to stay alert and stand outside of the car with my driver's side door open so my friend could see and hear everything going on. A thin, late 50s-ish older man got out of the car and seemed to be paying at the pump and standing beside his car while he got gas. But after a few seconds, he walked around the pump and maneuvered himself around my car door to stand within a foot of me and asked if he could pump my gas for me. Luckily, the gas nozzle was locked, so it was pumping without me having to hold it, and I immediately placed myself between the opening of the door and the man, and prepared to either shut the door with me inside it or move and slam it behind me to protect my friend if necessary. I calmly told him it was fine, no thank you. He looked me up and down with the corner of his lip tilted up and said, Pretty girls like you shouldn't be out here all alone, and you definitely shouldn't have to do this by yourself. Let a man help you, baby. And covered my hand with his own as he reached for the gas pump I was holding. I jerked my hand out from underneath his and slammed my car door shut, thinking the last thing I would want is him jumping in my car and driving away with my friend in the passenger seat. Orange flags started turning red, and my usual overly polite demeanor turned serious as I remembered something I'd read here that said it was better to be safe and to seem mean rather than be polite and uncomfortable. So I responded and said, Sir, get away from me. I can pump my own gas and I've already said no thank you. Leave us alone. He didn't move, only raised his chin and managed to make eye contact with me. All lip tilt gone. I stared him down and figured I'd gotten enough gas to last us enough time to get the hell out of wherever we were. So I maintained eye contact, pulled the nozzle out, and basically threw back onto the pump before getting into my car and drove away before he had even moved. As we drove away, I glanced in the rearview mirror and saw that his car wasn't even being filled up with gas, telling me he was driving by and decided to help a damsel in distress out. My friend was shaking the whole way home, telling me she would have just let the man pump her gas, but I'm just glad some of the confidence I'd gained from the sub helped me stay so attentive and respond confidently enough to get out of the situation. So, creepy, helpful gas station man in the middle of Ghost Town, Georgia, let's not meet. Gas Station Encounter I'm a long-time lurker, first-time poster. Thought I'd share this story since I've never posted anything. About seven years ago when I was 17... My parents went out of town for a weekend and left me at home. This was a pretty common occurrence. My parents trusted me. I would usually spend these weekends away staying with friends and family, 
as my parents' house is a bit creepy to be in alone, even during the day. We live in a small rural town where everyone knows each other, and generally it's pretty quiet and safe. Saturday, I was supposed to stay with a friend, but her parents decided at the last minute not to let me stay. It wasn't a big deal that I had to leave. I was somewhat prepared to have to go to home because her parents got weird about company sometimes. I left her house, which is about 15 minutes from my parents' house, around 9.30 or 9.45. While I was on my way home, I got a weird feeling that I can't really explain. I just knew that I didn't want to go stay at my parents' alone. I called my brother and asked if I could stay with him. At the time, he was living with a woman who had a small child. He told me it'd be quieter and easier for him just to come stay with me, since his dog would bark if I tried to come in the house. He said he would come be at her parents' house in 20 minutes. Side note that's relevant later, my brother is a relatively scary-looking guy. He's about 6 foot 3, 200 pounds, pretty muscular and covered in tattoos. After hanging up, I decided to stop at a gas station and grab a snack before going home, so that my brother would be there when I got there. I pulled into the gas station. There were only a few cars in the lot, which is typical because this is a small town in the rural south, where everything pretty much stops after 8pm. I parked and walked up to the door. There was a man standing outside the door smoking. He opened the door for me without saying anything. This is normal southern hospitality, especially since I'm female. I smiled and thanked him. Inside, there was another man standing by the door. I noticed him staring at me as soon as I came in. He gave me that gross up and down look and said something to the effect of, Hey sexy, what are you doing alone? Creepy as fuck. I just ignored him and walked towards the back of the store. He yelled after me and called me a bitch. I still ignored him. I figured he was drunk or high or just an asshole. Most people around here talk a big game but rarely back it up. I wasn't scared, just annoyed. I got my snacks and paid at the counter. When I walked back up to the door, both the men were gone. I was happy not to have to deal with anyone catcalling. I began walking across the lot towards my car, which was probably about 100 feet away from the door. As I was walking, I looked down at my phone to see if enough time had passed for my brother to be at my parents' house. When I looked up, the asshole who had hit on me was standing at the pump, staring. I looked at him for a second and continued walking. Hey, you know you're supposed to answer a man when he speaks to you, he said. I remember saying something snarky back to him and getting in my car. He looked pissed at my sarcasm. I locked my doors as soon as I was in my car, started it, and was thinking of nothing but getting home to eat my snacks and hang out with my brother. I put my car in gear and realized the man had disappeared. I looked around before pulling out of my parking spot only to realize that both men were sitting in a car facing mine across the lot. They were both staring at me and talking, occasionally even pointing toward me. I just stared at them, defiant and pissed. I didn't want them to think they scared me at all. While we were sitting having our staring contest, the man who had opened the door for me smiled and gave me the finger across the throat gesture as in, You're dead. I rolled my eyes and pulled out of the gas station annoyed. To my dismay, they pulled out behind me. I hadn't been scared up until this point because, as I said, most people here are a lot of talk with no follow through. Instead of going home, I took a few back roads that connect back in a sort of circle to see if they were really following me, which of course they were. When they realized I was testing them, they drove up really close to me and started laying on the horn. I couldn't see their headlights, they were so close. I called my brother and told him what was going on. He told me to come home and he would handle it. I started driving home, the two assholes were still on my ass blowing the horn. Even with my detours, I was only about three to four minutes from my parents' house. I slowed down to pull in the driveway and was immediately relieved. At the end of the driveway, my brother was standing shirtless, with his shoulders back, hands crossed in front of his stomach, clearly holding a pistol, his intimidating-looking pit bull sitting by his side. 
I drove around him into the yard. The two guys actually started pulling behind me until they saw my brother. Then they hightailed it out of there. I have no idea what they would have done if I'd stopped somewhere alone or kept driving. I always think fondly of that image of him standing there like a badass, ready to protect me. I'm thankful he was there. A stranger got in my car at an empty gas station and wouldn't get out. This happened just last night. And honestly, I'm just a little bit shaken over it still. I'll try to retell the tale exactly as it happened, but my fear is sure to have fudged my memory a bit. I work evenings as a dispatcher in a medium-sized Midwestern city. I was driving home at 2 a.m. when I stopped for gas. In retrospect, it was stupid to stop at all. The gas station was poorly lit and completely empty of any other customers. But I knew the shady areas of town and this was not usually one of them. As I was pumping gas, I noticed a middle-aged black woman sitting on the curb across the parking lot. It was a cold night and had just started raining. The woman was not wearing weather-appropriate clothing, so she was drenched. When the woman saw that I was watching her, she called out to me from across the parking lot. My second of many stupid decisions that night was choosing to engage with her. I was worried for her, so I approached her to see what sort of help I could offer. Hi, beautiful. I'm just trying to get home, but no one will help me, she said. I'm trying to get to City A, but the cab ride is $60, and I only have 40 Can you help me? I don't usually give money to panhandlers, but this woman seemed genuine. The weather was terrible and my job centers around helping people, so I agreed. I told her I didn't have any cash, but if she would come with me inside, I'd take some money out of the ATM and give her a few dollars. But the ATM wasn't working. I apologized and told her there was nothing else I could do for her. She followed me back outside, idly chatting with me as I opened my driver's door to get in. And then she got in my car. I was too shocked to really say anything. I sat staring at her as she buckled herself into the passenger seat. As soon as she got into my car, her demeanor changed entirely. She no longer seemed forlorn as much as she did extremely, extremely excited and restless. Just take me to my aunt's house. She can give me money. Of course, alarm bells are going off in my head. Although my first instinct is to tell her to get the fuck out of my car. My gut tells me that she would be dangerous. She'd already proven to be unpredictable. She seemed to be high and I didn't know if she had any weapons on her. Forcing her out of my vehicle, I thought, had the potential to elicit a violent reaction. Where are you asking me to take you, I finally said. Just start driving and I'll tell you where to turn. No, if you want me to consider driving you anywhere, I need you to tell me where we're going, I say, with no real intention of driving her anywhere. Don't worry, honey. I'm not one of the bad blacks. I'm not going to rob you or nothing. Just drive. No, I repeated. Where's your aunt's address? Okay, it's on Street A. What's the house number? As I was asking her questions, she got really agitated. We still had not left the gas station parking lot. I considered getting out of the car and going into the gas station for help at A. She seemed to know and be friendly with one of the attendants that was inside when I tried to get money in B. I wasn't about to leave her alone in my car. Finally, she snapped at me and said, Why are you asking me so many questions? I thought we were friends. You don't trust me? Is it because I'm black? I work at a police department, I said. It's my job to ask these sorts of questions. She flipped the fuck out. She started yelling at me about being a snitch, about trying to get her in trouble, just in general losing her damn mind. At this point, I'm more scared than ever. I just wanted her gone. But my instinct still told me asking her to get out of my car wouldn't work. So I decided to take a risk. I'm not a police officer. I just work at a police department. Why don't I take you to Walmart and see if they have an ATM that works? My idea was to get her out of my car as peacefully as possible, then lose her in the store. She liked my idea and immediately calmed down. I knew that driving off with this woman in my car was incredibly, incredibly risky, but it seemed like my best option at the time. As we're driving, she keeps talking to me. Her thoughts were erratic, bouncing all over the place, 
It sometimes seemed difficult for her to follow through, one thought at a time. But this is roughly how her conversation went. I'm glad we're friends now. I have about five or six people trying to get me. I'm going to come to your work tomorrow so we can arrest them together. Okay, we can talk about that tomorrow. Tonight you said you were trying to get home? Yes, honey, I'm trying to get to City B. City B? I thought you said you need to go to City A. Yeah, yeah. City A, that's what I meant. That's why the cab ride is $40. It's far away. The cab ride is $40? Yeah, baby. You said you have $40. I do, baby, and I have $40, but the cab ride is 60 Silence. Are you sure you can't take me to my aunt's house? She lives close by on Street B. I thought you said you lived on Street A. No, baby, I mean Street B. But it don't matter because she won't give me money anyway. You sure you can't just take me to City A? It was terrifyingly obvious that this woman was utterly full of shit because the details of her story were constantly changing. When we pulled into the Walmart parking lot, she finally got out of my car, only after I got out first, and followed me into the store. I told her before we went to find an ATM I needed to use the restroom. My plan was to call the police from inside a stall, but she followed me into the bathroom and that's when things got really weird. She grabbed the crook of my arm and whispered into my ear, if you don't got no money to give me, that's okay. But let me ask you something, sweetie. Do you like getting your pussy ate? I told her no as forcefully as I could manage, bolted into a stall and locked the door as fast as I could possibly manage. As soon as I had a barrier between us, I said, You know, I have some friends at the police department that can probably help you better than I can. I'm just going to call them and we can figure this out together. Again at the mention of the cops, she started screaming at me. I just kept reiterating that the police would help her. She snapped at me that she was just going to leave and stormed out of the bathroom. But it wasn't over. I waited to make sure she was really gone. Sure enough, not 60 seconds after she left, she came back into the bathroom and started banging on the stall door. And she said something that scared me more than anything else. Hey, come back to your car with me. I left my beer in your car. I blatantly tell her that no, I saw her get into my car and she had absolutely nothing with her other than the clothes on her back. After that, she left the bathroom again and didn't come back. I waited a good five minutes before exiting the bathroom. I immediately found a manager who called the police for me. Thankfully, I was in a different police jurisdiction from the one I work in because I was mortified at how entirely stupid I'd been the whole night and would have died of embarrassment if any of my co-workers had responded. The officer that responded took my statement and advised me to be more careful in the future. He said that sometimes panhandlers turn violent, and that just recently there had been a report of a woman who matched my description assaulting a good Samaritan that had stopped to try to help her. I definitely learned a lesson on stranger danger, and I'm lucky to have come out unscathed. I'm glad my stupidity didn't kill me. So Reddit... The next time you try to help a stranger at night, don't.